I'm Doug Nopar. I've got a small grass farm. We raise custom raised dairy heifers and sheep. You already have enough natural fertility in the soil. You just have to have the right microorganisms to be able to chew up all the elements and nutrition that are out there and spew them out in a form that the plants can take up. And I'm looking for the pasture to be able to handle uh, heavy rainfall. I'd love to see a greater diversity of pasture grasses out there and for the um, for the cattle and sheep to be even doing better than they are. So the idea of doing that by using compost and compost extract, which is stuff that I could produce here on the farm with at very little cost, was really appealing to me. So building the bioreactor is, um, for somebody who's handy, is not too difficult. The key ingredients are you need a pallet for it to stand on. You need some concrete reinforcing wire. It would need to be five foot tall to make a cylinder that has a um, diameter of like four feet approximately. You need about 12 feet long. You need landscape fabric that is also 60 inches high. You need a roll of that. You need some screws, and then you need five or maybe even six uh, five foot tall, five inch in diameter PVC pipes. PVC pipes are to place in the bioreactor really just for the first day to, to be able, because key for making the bioreactor work is each spot in the Johnson Sioux bioreactor shouldn't be ideally any further than like 12, 14 inches away from an air source. So those PVC pipes help you create cylinders that allows air to move through the bioreactor. You wet the pile down when you build it, you have it really moist, and then after a day you can take those PVC pipes out. I was using um, some bedding pack for my, for my barn that was old hay and sheep manure that was in there last winter and all through the spring and summer. I used four parts um, bedding pack to one part wood chips. And then I also grabbed a handful of soil from underneath a 150-year-old burr oak. So then once I filled the bioreactor and had it filled to the top, I really soaked it well and got it quite wet that first day. Making the extract is really not a science, but it basically involves taking two or three spadefuls of finished compost tape and putting it in a mesh bag and then soaking that compost in water and massaging with your hands, massaging the um, bag of compost, ideally 50 gallons of that extract in with 200 gallons of water in a spray tank. It has to go through that sort of mesh and sieve process or the, the sediment will clog up the sprayer. That hasn't been easy creating a sprayer that will apply that stuff because there is sediment in that compost extract. And what I didn't realize initially was <clears throat> year to year, it's pretty important to clean out the sprayer tank and clean out the lines and that sort of thing or they can get clogged up. There was some good microbiological activity, but it wasn't as much as we wanted. So we ended up um, using some of that as compost extract on the pasture, and then also bringing a bunch of it inside into our basement and got earthworms working on it over the winter. So um, there'll be a much more bi microbiologically rich compost and we'll be able to apply this in the spring as extract. The advantage to this system is if you if you get it to work, you really 
you really don't have to apply that much per acre. Check the compost once or twice a week. Check the temperature in the bioreactor with the with the temperature probe once or twice a week for a few weeks. Occasionally add water. I think, you know, just reflecting on it, in theory, this has incredible potential. It's still a, a very new practice. So there's a lot of refining it to, to be doing with it. And um, I'm hoping over the next few years, you know, that we can really figure out a system that works for me and works for other people.